Hello viewers, this is Professor Swati Patra here from the discipline of psychology, School of Social Sciences, IGNU, New Delhi. Today I will be talking about the postgraduate diploma in mental health, which is uh, an important program offered by the university. Now before I take up the details of the program, let me just uh, highlight what is mental health and why do we have a program on mental health? What is the importance of this uh, program? Now, when we talk about mental health, it has relevance for all the time okay? and especially when we talk about the present COVID-19 situation, it is very important okay? because we are facing so much of uncertainties, anxieties, stress all around. So this is very important that we talk about mental health and the university, IGNU University offers a program on this very topic that is mental health. And also if you see uh, in the post COVID-19 situation also, there will be this requirement of mental health uh, for all the people. Okay. So because of the different uh, kind of impact the, this pandemic has across various spheres like starting from the economic, uh, personal, relationship, everything career related, education related. So this uh, mental health will be a very important topic and it will be a very relevant topic that all of us needs to focus on. So uh, but usually when we talk about uh, mental health it is usually neglected. Okay. When we talk about uh, health usually we think about physical health not mental health. Okay. So uh, let us see like why this mental health is important like for example the WHO World Health Organization has also said that uh, it has defined health in this way that health is a state of complete physical, mental and emotional well-being. So here you see that it is not only physical health but also we have mental health and social emotional well-being also health and well-being. So that is why when we talk about health, we need to focus on all the aspects of health including mental health, including mental health and uh, social, uh, emotional uh, well-being also. Uh, like uh, it is also said that uh, the WHO also has said that uh, it is not that if you do not have any physical uh, diseases or any kind of infirmity then you are physically healthy, not necessarily. Okay, because it has to go beyond that. Similarly, when we talk about mental health, here also it is that it is not merely the absence of mental disorders, but it goes beyond that. Suppose uh, there is no mental disorders or no, uh, no mental health related issues, then can we say that the person is mentally healthy? Not necessarily, okay, it may not be so. So that is why it needs to go beyond the absence of mental disorders or any kind of mental illness. Okay. So that is why mental health needs to be thought of in a comprehensive manner. Okay. As it is said that there is no health without mental health okay, because if you do not have proper mental health then that also affects your physical health. So that is why mental health is very important to talk about and to know about also. Okay. So uh, like uh, if we uh, talk about mental health as a continuum then on the one side we have the uh, presence of mental disorders and on the other side we have the absence uh, flourishing state. Okay. So from one end as we are moving the uh, mental health, mental disorders are there on the one extreme end, then there is absence of mental uh, disorders, but this is not mental health. For mental health, for being mentally healthy, we need to go beyond that and uh, go to the other extreme end, that is we call as a flourishing state. Okay. So when we are talking about mental health, we need to understand that it is not merely the absence of mental disorders, but it goes beyond that. And uh, WHO has said that it is when we say mental and emotional health and well-being, it refers to that the individual is able to realize his or her all the potentials and also the individual is able to cope with all the stresses of life okay. and also the individual is uh, doing productive work and is uh, contributing effectively to the community. So you see that it is not simply the absence of mental disorders because usually in the uh, public uh, when we talk about mental health the uh, uh, notion the view is that okay there is no mental disorder okay mental health is related to disorders only okay but it is not like that mental health goes beyond the absence of mental disorders and it is achieving a flourishing state of mind. 
So now, uh, based on and uh, but if we talk about the Indian context here, we uh, are not aware about the concept of mental health to uh, in this way, and also there is a sort of uh, mental health professionals who cater to the mental health needs of people around. So to address this particular need of the society, uh, the IGNU University has started this program, PG Diploma in Mental Health program. And it has started since uh, last three years, it has been running very effectively. And uh, we have been receiving a very good response from all over India. Now to give you a brief background about this uh, particular program. So the objectives of the program are like it, as I said uh, just now that it is to create awareness about mental health, the concept of mental health and also the mental health related issues and concerns that are there in the among the people. So it is not only the mental disorders, it highlights the mental disorders and also along with that it also highlights the various mental health related issues and concerns. So that is why it aims at developing a sound base in the field of mental health. And also it develops the skills and techniques that are uh, uh, usually required when you are dealing with uh, uh, providing mental health services to the people. Okay. So th there are different like you uh, go for a physician or a, uh, like a medical doctor you require various types of skills. So similarly here also when we are providing mental health assistance or uh, mental health support to uh, the people who uh, come for clinical uh, services in the hospital setup. There also we require various kinds of skills to provide mental health assistance to the people. So it, the objective is to address the mental health requirements of the people. Okay. Now uh, some basic information about the postgraduate diploma in mental health is that it, the eligibility criteria let us see first. The eligibility is the master's degree in psychology, <coughs> one needs to have master's degree in psychology or social work or nursing. So these uh, having these qualifications will make you eligible to apply for this particular program. Along with this, if you have a medical graduation degree, okay, if you are medical graduates across the these disciplines, the Ayush uh, disciplines, allopathy, homeopathy or Ayurvedic or Yunani or Siddha medicine branch, then also you are eligible to apply for this uh, particular program. Now why this eligibility criteria we have kept, it is that because uh, as uh, uh, physical and mental health professionals when you are working in the um, health sector, then you will require to know, have an awareness about the mental health concept and the related uh, aspects of it so that you will be able to provide proper service and guidance and uh, support uh, to the uh, people. Now the duration of this program is the minimum duration is one year, this is a PG diploma program, so the minimum duration is one year uh, duration. You can complete the program in a one year uh, period, otherwise IGNU offers a flexibility also, so you can complete the program in a uh, span of three years also. Okay. So that flexibility is there because IGNU uh, has this in mind that uh, there are people who are working and have other commitments also. So the, this flexibility is offered by the university and you can complete the program in a span of three years duration. Okay. Now the instruction, the medium of instruction for this program is at present it is an English medium and as I have already said that it was launched in 2017 July. Okay. Now one thing I would uh, like to clarify here is that this program is offered only in the July session. Now uh, in IGNU there are other programs which are offered usually in uh, both the sessions like we have admission for January as well as July. Okay, so you will find that IGNU offers twice uh, admission twice a year. But there are a few programs like uh, this particular program PG Diploma in Mental Health program. It is offered only in the July cycle of admission. Okay. So uh, at present the admission is uh, going on for this uh, PG Diploma in Mental Health. And you have to refer to the IGNU website that is www.ignu.ac.in and uh, the admission is done online, that is online portal of admission, you have to uh, apply uh, for admission online. Now here uh, 
one more thing I would like to clarify is that when you apply for admission, we have regional centers all over India. When you apply online, there are like you have to uh, select the regional center and under that regional center, you will have a study center where the classes, uh, contact classes will be held. So the IGNOS functioning is that you have to apply online for admission and then you have to choose your regional center and then you have to uh, choose your study center under that. Now, there are uh, the, in this particular program, we have uh, four uh, theory courses and there is a one practical course. Okay. And the total uh, number of credit for this program is, it is 32 credits. Now, in IGNO system, it is that one credit equals to 30 hours of study. Okay. Now, when we say uh, one credit 30 hours of study, so it includes uh, uh, everything in the sense that you have to go through the study material. Um, you have to write the assignments for that, you have to uh, attend the classes uh, related to that particular course, so all these things are included. So that means you uh, will need tentatively that much, that many hours to complete that, that particular course. Okay. So uh, now uh, when we come to the instructional system for this particular program, uh, as I said IGNU has a multi-centric system, instructional system. It uses a multimodal uh, approach, like there are different ways through which the teaching learning happens in the university setup. Okay. First of all, you have the uh, self-learning materials, the print materials, the hard copy. Okay. Now, this is called SLM because self-learning materials it is called, so that you, because see, since it is a distance mode course, the teacher, we will not be there in a face-to-face -face, uh, uh, scenario in the classroom setup. Uh, but you will have some contact classes at the study center. Okay. So that is why here in the IGNU system when we uh, prepare the, write the learning materials, the uh, course materials, the teacher is usually inbuilt into the print materials, into the course materials. Okay. So that is why it is called self-learning materials. The student has to go through the course material and uh, it is written in such a way that it is interactive in nature as if the teacher is talking through the course material to you. So we have the print materials, the hard copy of the course materials uh, you have and apart from this counselling sessions are conducted at the study centre. As I had said that uh, there is, uh, uh, you have to choose your regional centre when you are applying for admission, you have to choose your regional centre, then under that regional centre you have to select a study centre. In that study centre usually contact classes are held over the weekends. Okay. Now the study center schedules those classes. So you and the faculty uh, of uh, that particular center, they usually take the classes. Okay. So these are called contact classes and you will have those uh, classes at the study center. Now apart from your course materials, apart from your uh, counseling sessions or the contact classes at the study center, you also have the, we also have the e-gyan course. That is, uh, it is on the IGNU website, there is e-gyan course and it is online material are available, the soft copy of your course materials are available there on eGAN course. So you can also refer to the eGAN course uh, for uh, having access to the uh, soft copy of your course materials. And uh, there in eGAN course also we have the audio video programs of these programs related to different courses and it is uploaded there under eGAN course so you can have access to the audio video programs that are there related to the different courses that you have in this uh, PG Diploma program. Now apart from this, we have the e-content app, the IGNU mobile app. So in the mobile also you can download the soft copy of your course materials and you can have access to the study materials any, from anywhere at any point of time. Okay. And uh, besides all these uh, methods, IGNU also has uh, Gyan Darsan that is through television, it is teleconferencing, there is a dedicated channel on the uh, television uh, and you can watch different programs related to the course that are telecasted there. And Gyan Vani and Gyan Darsan, the program schedule of these two, it is available on the IGNU website and also you can contact your regional centre for the schedule also, so that you can know what are the uh, programs that are being telecasted and as for your uh, related to your program and as per your interest also you can watch those programs. Okay. Like as I said Gyan Vani is also there that is through uh, FM channel that is through that is interactive radio counselling 
the, uh, the FM channel is 105.6. So through that also we have uh, different uh, topics related to the program that are uh, telecasted. So you can listen to those programs also. So as you see, IGNU uh, follows uh, uh, different methodologies, different approaches to uh, provide, uh, to facilitate the teaching learning process of the students. Okay. And uh, you have to be a, a, like a student who is uh, like uh, reading all the, uh, reading the program guide. And also one more thing here I would like to highlight is that when you have uh, the courses, different courses of this program, there is also a program guide of this particular program. Now program guide highlights the uh, different uh, aspects related to this program so that once you go through the program guide, you can have an idea about the overall uh, um, uh, program itself. Okay. So that is why we always suggest that uh, the student needs to go through the program guide in detail because everything is given there so that uh, the student will be knowing about the particular program. And besides this, any other uh, information or query, you can always the, approach the faculty also and the faculty uh, information is always available on the website. Okay. But as I said, program guide, uh, one needs to go through in detail. Now, uh, uh, let us see the core structure of this particular program. Uh, as I have said that there are four theory courses in this particular program and then one, uh, we have one practical program, a practical course in this particular program. The theory courses are MPC 051. We have course code for each course. Uh, as you can see, we have MPC 051 that is Fundamentals of Mental Health and it is of six credits. MPC 052 that is Mental Disorders. MPC 053 that is Mental Health in Special Areas. MPC 054 that is Services for the Mentally Ill. And MPC L055 that is Practical. As you can see here, each theory course is of 6 credits and the practical course is of 8 credits. So in total, the program has 32 credits. I have also informed you earlier that credit in IGNU system is that 1 credit equals to 30 hours of study. So as you see, MPC 051, each of the theory courses, they are of 6 credits. Okay. So that means 180 hours of uh, input you need to give to complete this particular course. Now let us see now about uh, each of these theory courses, what does it consist of so that you will have an idea about uh, when we uh, talk about this particular program, what all are going into this. Okay. Now in the first course MPC 051 that is Fundamentals of Mental Health, uh, here you will get an overview of the concept of mental health. What is mental health? Okay. Because uh, uh, as I said in the beginning, there is a lot of uh, a misconception about mental health term itself, the concept itself uh, and usually we talk about, uh, we mean physical health. When we talk about uh, health, we usually mean physical health, not other aspects of health that are also equally important like mental health, emotional health, social health and even spiritual health also. So in this uh, first course that is MPC 051, Fundamentals of Mental Health, you will uh, gain an idea about the concept of mental health and also the concept of uh, uh, normality and abnormality that we talk about in this uh, when we talk about mental health. And related to this, there are various psychological theories also that you will learn about so that your understanding of mental health as a concept becomes more clear. Now another aspect here is that when we talk about mental health, uh, it is not that only the individual. We also have the society, we also have the family, we also have the culture. So all these things have an impact on the mental health of the individual. So when we talk about mental health, we need to know how these other aspects, the family context, the particular cultural uh, context, the particular society, how these impact the mental health of the individual. Because uh, when we are offering mental health services to any individual, we need to take into account these aspects also because they have a they have an influence on the mental health of the individual so uh, without considering these things it will our understanding of the mental health of the individual will be incomplete so in this first uh, course mpc051 you will be learning about all this mainly the concept clarify your concept of mental health and how the different psychological theories they talk about mental health and how 
the um, mental health is impacted by different aspects that are like family, culture and society. Now in the second course that is MPC 052, it is mental disorders. So in this particular course specifically it will be focused on the different disorders that we have. And related to this, first of all, you will learn about the classification of mental disorders. Okay. Uh, uh, when we talk about mental disorders, we have a classification system that is, uh, there are usually two classification systems. One is called uh, DSM, that is Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of uh, Mental Disorders. And the other one is ICD, International Classification of Disorders. So these two are classification systems uh, at the international level. They classify the mental disorders so that it helps the uh, mental health professionals when they uh, uh, want to diagnose the mental disorders faced by the individuals, uh, it helps them, facilitates them to diagnose what kind of mental disorders the individual is uh, facing and accordingly the treatment plan or the intervention can be provided to the individual. So this classification of mental disorders, disorders is a very important uh, aspect when we talk about mental disorders. So, uh, when we talk about this mental disorders, usually the uh, clinical, we talk about in terms of the clinical picture of disorders, what are the symptoms or signs that uh, we need to know so that uh, we can identify that, okay, this is the, this particular disorder uh, is being manifested here in this particular individual. And also when we talk about the diagnosis of mental disorders, that time also there is uh, Sometimes we need to do the assessment also. These are called psychological assessment and uh, mental health assessment. Okay. Like if you go to a medical doctor or a physician, uh, usually we have the uh, health, uh, medical health checkup, okay, the assessment. Like you have the blood test or you have the uh, sugar test, okay, cholesterol test, okay, so like that. Like the pulse, okay, so all these are checked. So similarly, when we go uh, for any kind of mental health related problems to a mental health professional. Here also this mental health assessment uh, occupies a very important place. Okay. So this mental health, uh, we need to know about this mental health assessment because when we talk about mental disorders, it affects our mental processes related to our thinking, related to our um, uh, effect, emotions and related to our behavior. So, Related to all these mental and psychological processes, we need to have the assessment so that uh, that will help the facilitate the mental health professional to uh, further uh, undertake various psychological assessment if there is uh, a need for this and then arrive at a particular diagnosis based on the classification system that is there for the mental disorders. So in this particular course MPC 052 mental disorders, you will know about the classification of mental disorders and also you will know about the uh, different uh, uh, clinical features of the particular disorder and you will have an awareness about how a mental health assessment is carried out and uh, what is the role of psychological assessment when in the context of mental disorders. Now the uh, third course MPC 053 that is mental health in special areas. Here as the uh, title that of the particular uh, paper course indicates, we are talking about different areas in which mental health occupies an important place across the different stages of development, for example, uh, children or adolescents or in the context of elderly, even children with special needs. So we need to have an awareness about the mental health issues related to these particular groups of people and also mental health issues in the context of school, in the context of workplace and uh, we can talk about like uh, here also it is highlighted the different uh, uh, types of mental health like uh, developmental disorders which are faced by the children as they grow through the life in the during the developmental stages of life and uh, self-harm, suicide and addictions. These are the uh, important uh, uh, mental health issues that uh, majority of the people are facing in the society and uh, in the context of the, this uh, COVID-19, uh, present COVID-19 pandemic situation, uh, this kind of mental health uh, problems are also increasing okay, uh, related to uh, substance use, addiction, self-harm or suicide and depression, these things. So in this particular course, MPC 053, you will learn about mental health in 
uh, different uh, context, ranging from the school to the workplace and also highlighting the uh, self-harm, suicide and children with special needs also. What is the uh, role of mental health in these particular uh, groups of people? Now, uh, the next course that is MPC 054, that is services for the mentally ill. So here you will uh, uh, learn about the various types of services that are available for uh, providing mental health assistance to people. So it will talk about uh, different psychotherapies that are available. Okay. Now here one thing I would like to clarify is that uh, there is a difference between a psychiatrist and a clinical psychologist or psychologist. Okay. Now a psychiatrist, uh, uh, he or she is like completing the MBBS, the medical graduate and then uh, he or she is specializing in the field of psychiatry and they are able to prescribe medication, medicines. Okay. But uh, here uh, the psychologist or the clinical psychologist, they are uh, not uh, meant to, they are not authorized to prescribe medicine to the uh, patients. Okay. So here uh, in this particular course, MPC 054, uh, you will learn about the different types of psychotherapies that are available, the psychological intervention that are required when we uh, uh, want to offer psychological support or mental health assistance or support to the uh, people to deal with different kinds of mental health related problems or disorders. Okay. So in this particular uh, course you will learn about the psychotherapies, also you will learn about the other kinds of mental health services that are uh, provided and uh, the uh, rehabilitation facilities that are there and the and also when we are talking about children with special needs and uh, there is a certification issue also. So how to certify, what is the procedure of regarding the rights, most important the rights, laws and policies related to mental health. This particular course, course also will highlight on these aspects and will talk about the positive mental health, okay. how to achieve. Uh, a positive state of mental health. Now these are the all the four theory courses that we talked about MPC 051, 052, 053 and 054. So these are the theory courses that you will learn about. Okay. In addition to this, now when I talk about these uh, four courses and I have already said that uh, uh, related to these there will be classes, contact classes at the study center and the faculty who take uh, contact classes they are called academic counsellors. Okay. The overall uh, purpose of the academic counsellor is that to facilitate the learners in their journey through the program. Okay. And they are called academic counsellor. The academic part is also there and counsellor is also there because uh, the students who enroll for different kinds of IGNU programs, they are already working in different contexts. Uh, they are, uh, they have uh, other different uh, commitments related to their uh, personal, family, career, job and other things. So, uh, and sometimes they uh, undertake uh, programs after a long time of, uh, after a long gap also. So, they are not in touch with the uh, studies. So, we, like we find that usually they will require assistance related to their motivation, related to their how to go through the uh, courses, how to maintain their motivation, how to um, uh, read the uh, course materials, uh, what are the different types of study habits they can pick up, uh, this thing. So that is why in addition to helping the learners uh, by providing the academic input, the academic counsellors also provide uh, counselling, uh, they also provide, they listen to the uh, learners, to the students and they provide counselling also to the students with regard to how to uh, keep their motivation high, how to complete the courses, how to plan out their studies, so related to various things. Okay. So that is why they are called academic counsellors. Okay. And also the academic counsellors will evaluate your assignments and then give you, give you feedback and suggestions uh, on your assignment so that you can improve your assignments and uh, prepare for your uh, final examination. So that is why content counselling is there and along with the content counselling there is uh, personal counselling and guidance also is given by the academic counsellor. Now uh, these are the counselling schedule, okay. as I have said depending on the credits you have number of sessions, the classes that will be held, so uh, you can and each counselling session is of 2 hours duration. 
So MPC 051, uh, 052, 053, 054 these are the theory uh, courses and related to each of these theory courses you have uh, 9 number of sessions that, that means 9 classes will be held and each class will be of 2 hours duration. And MPC 05, uh, MPCL 055 that is practical course it is of 8 credits and it will be of 240 hours duration. I will be talking about practical uh, in detail now. Uh, as I said this practical course uh, it is carried out in a hospital setup in the in a department of psychiatry. Okay. Now when you take admission uh, you can contact your regional center and find out details about the uh, center where you can do the practical and there will be a supervisor at the work center. So the particular psychiatry department where you will be carrying out your practical that is called as a work center. Now one supervisor the faculty there will be either uh, the clinical psychologist or the psychiatrist they will be your supervisor at the work center and they will help you in carrying out different activities that are prescribed in the practical. Here one thing you uh, need to note is that we have a practical handbook okay, and everything in detail is given there. So you have to go through that practical handbook to know exactly what are the um, uh, what is the method or what is the procedure of carrying out the practical. Okay. Now here briefly you can see that uh, these are the activities you need to carry out. One is case history taking, then clinical interviewing, mental status examination and then case vignettes will be there focusing on the diagnosis and intervention and then there will be case intervention related activities. Okay. So these are the different activities that one is required to carry out uh, in the practical course. Now uh, in detail we can see that you have to write two detailed case histories and then uh, when you are taking out uh, carrying out the mental status examination the supervisor over there will help you in knowing how to carry out these uh, mental status examination and you have to write the verbatim report of how the interview was conducted. And then the supervisor will assign you two case vignettes also one focusing on the diagnosis and one on the psychological intervention so that you can um, uh, carry out those activities there okay. and the fourth one is observing two cases where intervention is being carried out and the supervisor will help you um, uh, knowing and understanding the case and then you can uh, suggest what are the intervention appropriate intervention that needs to be given there and accordingly you write a report on those activities. Now regarding the selection of work center for the uh, carrying out the practical there are different uh, certificates uh, like regarding the criteria for the work, there is criteria for supervisor also selecting the supervisor at the work center, there is consent of like, consent letter also is required from the supervisor and there is a format for approval of work center and supervisor also. So all these things as I said it is available in the practical handbook and you need to go through the practical handbook in detail to know about the things. Now as I have said the supervisor role is very crucial, the supervisor will help you in uh, finding in uh, getting the cases, in knowing what exactly is case history, how to carry out the mental status examination and uh, providing uh, basically supervisor will provide you uh, about uh, some guidance regarding your professional development in this particular uh, field. Okay. Now there is a format also for writing the practical report again it is clearly given in the practical handbook and you can uh, see the format and when you are writing the practical report at the end of after you carry out the activities and you are writing the practical report you have to uh, write the report as for the format given in the handbook. Okay. And in the practical report one thing I would like to highlight here is that there is a reflection component. Okay. There is a section uh, reflection that means that whatever you have learned when you are carrying out the activities at the work center at the hospital uh, at the psychiatry department whatever you have learned you have to reflect on your experiences reflect on your learning and then write on your reflection in the practical report that is one uh, component of this. Now uh, coming to the evaluation of this uh, PG diploma program. Uh, Again evaluation also as the instructional system in ICNO it follows a multi uh, pronged approach. Here also in the evaluation it is a multi tier system. The first is that self assessment questions are given in your course material. Okay. In your course material when you are write, uh, going through the course material within each 
unit, each chapter, there are self-assessment questions so that you can assess yourself when you are learning. Okay. Apart from this, we have continuous evaluation that is assignments related to each course. You have one assignment that you have and the assignment questions are uploaded on the IGNU website and you have to write those assignments and submit at your study center. And then you have term and examination and in IGNU system the term and examination is usually held twice, one in June and then December. But since uh, this is uh, the admission is uh, July, this is a one year program, uh, when you take admission in July uh, session, you will be able to appear for your exam in next year June and after that you can appear for your exam anytime June or December okay, depending on your uh, convenient time. And then also evaluation it consists of viva voce. So these are the three different aspects of evaluation and the weightage of evaluation is that continuous evaluation through assignment it carries 30 percent weightage and the term and examination it carries 70 percent weightage. And here uh, in uh, PG diploma in mental health program your pass uh, percentage is 40 okay that is a pass mark. And as I have said, I would like to highlight a little bit on the assignment part. Assignment is compulsory and uh, the, it carries 30 percent weightage and you have to write your assignments uh, by hand and it should be original and it should not be copy pasted from your uh, course materials. The objective of assignment is that you are going through your course materials, you are understanding that and then you are writing uh, the answers related to that so that it helps you in preparing for your final examination also. Uh, so that is why the assignment is also evaluated by the academic counsellor. Okay, so ensure that you submit your assignments uh, on time, you read the questions carefully and then give the relevant answers and submit your assignment at the study centre on time. Okay. And the academic counsellors, they usually go through the assignments, they evaluate it and give comments, constructive comments and positive comments about how the assignment has been done. So that gives you a feedback to improve your assignments further also. Now the term and examination here as I have said it is conducted in June and December and there is uh, eligibility for this appearing in the term and examination is that you should have opted and pursued the prescribed courses, you should have submitted the assignments related to that particular course and then you have to fill up the examination form and pay the examination fee uh, for that particular course okay. and pass mark is 40 percent and in practical. The, it has both internal uh, evaluation component and also external evaluation component and it has to be passed separately in each component and the pass mark is 40 percent. So MPCL 055 the practical evaluation uh, scheme as you are seeing here that we have internal evaluation and also external evaluation and you have to uh, pass in each uh, component separately that is 40 percent you have to secure. And it also includes viva voce that will be carried out in your regional center. So once you complete your practical activities at the work center, you have to prepare the practical report and then you have to submit the report to your regional center and then viva voce is conducted at the regional center. So uh, 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 finally we can see here that there is a tentative timeline for this program, admission is usually conducted in July, this is once a year admission in July only. And the theory counselling sessions for this program, it happens from September to December and the session, uh, schedule for this uh, counselling sessions, you can have it from the study centre. Then the practical activities for this, it is uh, the timeline given is uh, between January to ap April, the learner, the student can carry out these practical activities. And then assignments can be uh, prepared between September to March and the deadline for submission of assignment is March 31st usually. For any update you can always check the IGNU website for the submission uh, date and the submission of practical uh, re uh, report is it is 31st uh, May and then you have the uh, theory the term and examination and then you have the practical term and examination that is conducted through VIVA. Okay. So uh, uh, viewers uh, as you have seen that this is the outline this is the overview of the PG diploma in mental health program and uh, this program is a, uh, is a it is a need of the hour program okay and it is very relevant keeping in mind the requirement of the mental health in the society in general so 